studied French for three years, president of the French club, not to be me. Um, oh, well, got it wrong. Nerd of files. Hello. Right. Well, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Uh, I suppose you can start off by telling us a little bit about your character and uh, what we're expecting to see on the show and your impressions of the show so far. My impressions of the show so far. Um, okay, so Tess is a um, trend spotter, so she has a very instinctive feeling of where masses are slowly drifting towards and she has a sense. Uh, at the same time she's a very, she has big trust issues. Um, she has a very complex relationship with her mother. She also sees her son or what seems to be her son in her dream and has been seeing that for the last six years of her life. Was in a mental institute because of that. Um, mm. And she uh, develops some kind of very strong paranoia towards people in general. Uh, feels a lot more comfortable in dream world at the beginning of the season. This is going to change a little by little. Um, what can you expect of the show? Um, I think it's a very, it's very, it's. Storytelling-wise, it's huge to be to have the possibility of exploring dreams because you can go any direction. Um, there's something that you know you have three characters from the beginning that have apparently nothing in common, and little by little, this is all going to merge towards the same point, which was very much a lot of a relief for <laughs> us cast members that were alone on the big part of the journey, and then suddenly we're like, hey, finally we meet. Um, or, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what I love about it was, yeah, being able to play in that dream world and outside of that dream world, um, being constantly surprised by images that you would never expect to see on a, on a reality anchored, well, this is reality anchored, but you know, like a reality only show, and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it sounds unique. I mean, it sounds like it's certainly a very layered and what? it's not a simple, you know, program by any means. Nope. And every time you're like, why? Okay. <laughs> and then, oh, right, that's why. I get it. You know, it's, it yeah. does that all cool. the time. So when we first encounter your characters, she seems a little tired and withdrawn. Is that pretty much... Is that because of the recent events that she's going through, or is that going to kind of change as her character? What did you say, tight? It, um, how did I, I was saying, is she going to change? Right now she's kind of withdrawn, and now she's trying to figure out who these people are she's inter interacting with. Is, do you envision her character changing in terms of interacting more with other folks, opening up and allowing them to help her? Because right now yes, she's... Yes, little by little, but she's... Uh, not trusting. No, right? she's not trusting a lot. I think she will... She's not even trusting herself, which is make, maybe what makes her so withdrawn. Um, little by little, it does change throughout the season. She um, she gets rid of... Yeah, she gets rid of a lot of patterns that she was in, I think. And she, she goes through this whole big metamorphosis psychological <laughs> but uh but i think hopefully we get in season two and it's really by the end of this season that she finally finds her ground so hopefully season two and she can be a little more open in the world you know there's one thing is she's withdrawn but at the same time in in the dreams themselves she's a lot more i always have the image of she's like a fish out of water when she's in the real reality but she's a lot more open and you know like yeah curious and less guarded in the dream world yeah. talk to us a little bit about the cast chemistry so far is everyone getting along yeah Definitely. pleasure it's so funny because it's really different people you know it's uh so you really have that feeling of do we have something in common? Oh yes, we do, you know? That, that makes me, yeah, that's one of the things I love in the show. Is that very different people. You don't come from the same environment at all. What do you like, how do you like shooting in New York? Loved it, loved it, yeah. Couldn't afford to live there if I wasn't <laughs> shooting here. But uh, yeah, I love New York and it was such a, an amazing experience to be working, especially for this show, to be shooting in New York. When you're playing a trend spotter, when you're talking about connectivity between people, when you're talking about all these, it's such a an end house, yes. <laughs> you know, yes. where you feel like a big living organism, you know, and, and it's, yeah, very inspiring.
did you do any additional prep work when you first came or when you first read the script? Did you um, do anything different from your normal process? It's always different. Um, yeah. Well, different things, I guess. Yeah, of course, because it's always different. But uh, there was a lot of um, exploration of lucid dreaming and what it meant and actually trying to get into those dreams and reading a lot about dreams and what it meant and, you know, where it could go. And, um, dream and diary? Paranoia. Yeah, yeah a dream diary, but, like, more than that, man. <laughs> if you only knew, like, now I have this whole ritual before I go to sleep, it's crazy. It's like, yeah. Do you find yourself trying to remember your dreams now? I don't even more try so now, I remember. Now, now, you, now oh, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I totally remember. It's crazy. It's really fascinating because the yeah. more, the more I read that and I, people told me that, but then you experience it, the more um, importance and respect you have towards your dream and the more you are just a little curious about them, the more they give back to you. Wow. And every night I dream now, and every night I learn something. That's so interesting. Yeah, not really. That was that was a big discovery. But work-wise, it made me super paranoid. <laughs> it's a play test for sure. Like the, the whole the whole season was super intense for me. Mm. I started not trusting anyone, not trusting myself. I've never been in that. Wow, so you so went a little, a little, not too much method, but a little method. Where a little, you, yeah. Especially, you know, you're alone in the city and, you know, I don't come from here. It's like, mm -hmm. I just don't want it. <laughs> Did you prepare differently for shooting uh, reality sequences versus dream sequences, kind of? Yeah, uh, that's kind of what I was trying to say when I was saying fish in the water and fish out of, outside of the water. It's, I'm so, she's so tense and, and controlled all the time in the real world and paranoid that for me the dream world was the moment where I could actually swim a little, you know, and have that feeling of just feeling. And I like that. I like that she was, you know, guarding and not feeling anything and taking, you know, and, and being all in her head in, in real life. And then suddenly in the dream you kind of want to touch things differently and smell a tulip that you see and, you know, and really have that sensorial feeling in the dream world. And I like that. It was, it was exciting. Have you made any recommendations to the director to say, you know what, how about we try this in terms of something that transpired in your dream and you, and you wanted to translate that into one of the scenes you're shooting for the dream state? Have you done that? Yeah, or I you did. Just let it but it's not only for that, I'm looking for everything. I'm, I'm terrible for that. <laughs> so I thought about this and I, I just throw out ideas and see what they catch. But I did that in love with like, I had this dream. I had this thing, I can't really go into the details of the dreams, but a lot of them turned out to, or, oh, I read this thing about this thing, you know, and you yeah. see if he puts it in or it doesn't, yeah. Yeah, I love working like that. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.